Today, we're talking about five concerns about the Canon R5. Five concerns about the R5. Coming up. All right, welcome to Alec GTV. My name is Alec Godwin, if you're just meeting me. And today, I'd like to welcome you. If you're here for the first time, please go ahead and subscribe. Join the family here. We do music movies, um, movie reviews, tech reviews, and um, short films. Basically everything entertaining. So I'm sure you will love to be a part. Let's get into it. Please permit me to relax. I'm excited about this uh, Canon R5 like most of you are. Five things that I am concerned about that filmmakers should be concerned about. And number one will be the price. What would the price be? I don't know about everybody else, but you know, you all know what's there. 8K RAW, you know, no crop, full frame sensor, and you know, dual pixel, um, IBs, all the good stuff. We all know, you've seen other channels, you've seen other reviews. I don't need to go about that, but here are five things that I know we should be concerned about this release. Number one will be the price. How much is it going for? Um, that way, that is gonna be a deal breaker. No matter how high class the place is, no matter how, it's a DSLR, it's a small factor camera, and um, I know that the Panasonic uh, S1H has their price for 4,000, um, but I would, I would if, if I was Canon, I would try to keep it in that 4,000 range. My reasons is, you want to smash out the competition. You want to do it real cool. Why was Blackmagic uh, cinema camera able to register their presence because of the price? 1,300 for a cinema camera, that's unbelievable. So it sold out like crazy. And then the 6K came, another sellout. I mean, if the 8K comes, everybody would jump on it, but if Canon does this right, because we know that Blackmagic, if they come out at 8K, the price range will probably be about 4,000. 4, judging from their previous, maybe about three, 3,500, you understand? So those are the things that Canon needs to think about that will affect their eventual impact. This is a comeback for Canon, you know? So I think the price is key. That's my take on it. I just feel like the price shouldn't be more than 4,000. That way you could crush out the competition. You could actually give room for future releases. It's hard for any other 8K camera to be less than 4K. I'm talking about what benefits Canon. From my perspective, I want what benefits me and I want it less, you know. I'm hoping that it will be less for me to be able to get my hands on it. So, um, the next on my list, calm down, it is, is it going to be Netflix approved? Is it going to be Netflix approved? That is actually more important for me because Right now, I won't be going, I have a, I have the um, a Sony FS5 Mark II. I have the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, which is also a great camera. It's also good for film production and stuff like that. But they are not Netflix approved. Um, I have, of course, uh, the Canon M50, which is my go-to Canon camera for now. I haven't left Canon. I never left Canon. There's always been a Canon by my side. You know, I've never left Canon, but it is becoming more and more becoming my less used camera, you know, run and gun camera, you know, on the side. So, but this is the time, chance for Canon to come back and, and take over. But my priority now, out of these five things I'm going, I, I, I'm going to list in this video, this number two is my major priority, Netflix approved. If, because if it's not Netflix approved, I really don't see any need to go for it, you know. Fine, it's going to be really good, the picture will be great, but what use, what end, what is the benefit? I think Canon should really study what they need. I think they, it's about time they make a move for, let's give them something for Netflix. I wonder how Panasonic pulled it off 
and the SS1 is approved for Netflix for 6K sensor. Now, why wouldn't the Canon um, 8K um, raw recording camera not be approved for Netflix? Well, there are many reasons why. And I will talk down, down, down the list. I will, I will address that, but Canon needs to sit on this and make sure they are approved for Netflix because these indie filmmakers will flood the market, you know, with movies, you know, with a, such a, with such a camera. Otherwise, the Panasonic, uh, the Panasonic S1H already is winning. Good, some bad, some ugly, we know that, but it is Netflix approved. So that makes it really very important for me. Now, I have not laid my hands on that camera. So this is the chance. And like most people, I really wish that camera is Netflix approved. Then I know that Panasonic, yeah, I'll be like, I'm sorry, well, we're going to connect, but but I have to see what Canon, what, what's up for Canon. 8K Road, that's awesome. It should be approved. But that brings us to number three. How? What could possibly mess up their approval for Netflix? If, if Canon tries to cut corners and try to do their usual, what they call the Canon hammer, right? If they try that kind of stuff on the audio, my number three, which is a key factor for me, I cannot use any more cameras without good audio, internal audio. Well, not internal audio, internal recording that supports you know, movie production, you know, that has the um, form factor and the features for movie production. An audio jack, a decent audio jack, input headphone, okay, um, good preamps, usable, something decent, you know. I know we have to, for film, we still record externally and have that, you know, as a backup. Even if it's a mini um, XLR jack, since it's a small form factor, a mini XLR jack, I mean, that would be appreciated, but things like that are the deal breakers that will, will make Netflix not even approve. Now let's go on to my number four. My number four will be, when is it gonna be released? <laughs> when, Canon? When? Because this is what Sony has uh, done wrong. Right now, it's gonna be like, uh oh, <laughs> maybe we should just Hold on, you know, if they had dropped it all along, it would have been on point, the camera would have been bought and they would have made money over it before Canon is coming up with stuff like this and it would, be like, it would have all just have been, okay. Timing is key. If they get the time wrongly, then it's a pity because uh, as we speak, Canon can still be beat into it. Like, Another company could still beat Canon to it. You know Blackmagic don't talk much. We know that they could drop it an 8K camera right now. You have to do it right. Timing is key. When is it going to come out? And I hope Canon don't act like Sony and keep it lingering. We know, we know it's not a good time to release now. I agree. Don't, I would say don't release now. Anti-Covina that's around. So when that, when Antigovina goes away, then drop it. You know, I would love to have it. I would love to have a test model. Canon, if you hear me, I would love to. You know, if they are gonna be releasing pre-test um, models, you know, I would love to be in the number. And that brings us to my number five. My number five is really a question, food for thought. You know, we should be concerned about what's the deal? What's the catch? What is what is really going on? Are, are we getting a, the perfect camera? Oh, uh, camera conspiracy. When I'm done with this, I'll probably go check out camera conspiracy. If you don't know about that guy, his channel, he's a funny dude. With his conspiracy theory, you know, of a perfect camera, which I know will never come, you know, but this is the closest to it, and uh, I would love to see what he, what he has to say about, about this camera. But the bottom line is, is this the perfect camera? Could it be? Is anything really perfect? 
to be, we kind of just give you everything that could hinder their li other lineup? Uh, I don't think so. Overheating? Shudder. Overheating is my greatest fear. I can't stand it. Oh, noisy fan? <laughs> Cooling system? Because with all these specs, 8K RAW is large. The camera will struggle with overheating unless they got something really smart going on. So, this is a heavy release. It's a huge release. It's awesome. It's not, you know, I won't downplay whatever they drop out. I won't downplay it because it's not easy. There's both sides to everything. So, um, while we are always thinking of our side, Canon is thinking, thinking of their side. So, is there going to be a catch? I think so. There is going to be a catch. So my fifth question is, what is that catch? And how can we tolerate it? Or can we tolerate it? With that, I round up my video today. And I'd like to say, have a good day. Have a blessed day. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Keep the social distancing going on. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, that will be my short film. Which I hope I do well. You will see, and you will be the judge. See you in a short movie next week. Peace out.